offensive lineman. And one of the guys getting a lot of attention this week at the Shrine Bowl, not just during practice, but also the game that was played last night, Xavier Newman-Johnson, Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Man, what a journey for you. I, I, look where you are compared to how it all started for you when you arrived at Baylor as just a pup. Yeah, man, you know, it's been real good, you know, just – being at Baylor the last five years have, you know, helped me grow on and off the field, you know, whether it's from becoming a starter to graduating to becoming a team leader. I feel like Baylor is a great school, and it's really helped me along the path to get me to where I am today. You had to play immediately. I mean, right off the top. And then you've had to play basically every offensive line position. And it wasn't always easy. And at times it seemed like it was probably harder than you could have ever expected. What changed for you this last season? Honestly, man, it really just came with the guys in that room and our coach, uh, Coach Mateos, man. Just, you know, everybody realizing that this game isn't, it shouldn't be as complicated as it seems. We should all just go out there and have fun. And I feel like that's one thing that we did as a unit. Um, went out there and had fun, and the result of the year showed for us. So. You know, last year was, I'm talking 2020. I don't need to remind you how difficult it was. You were playing in different places. Did you ever feel like that, that once you got settled in, they this is what you could do? And and you knew your role. It it was less confusing. It allowed you to have it and just be instinctive. Yeah, man. You know that that whole year was just a bunch of a bunch of negative energy. You know, from COVID, the world getting shut down, to um, not knowing if you're going to have an opponent at the end of the week, or you know, just basically switching lineups the whole week because, you know, you could go into one lineup the whole week and then Friday two people were down because of direct contact to COVID. So that whole year was just a mental test for not only me but my entire team. And, you know, we didn't have the outcome we wanted that year. And as a senior class, you know, we took that into consideration and we made it known that we weren't going to finish like that and we wanted to go out on a high note and go out um, in remembrance of Baylor, so. Xavier, uh, you know, you had a, a, a tremendous week, practice clips. We've had some analyst scouts talking. I've seen it about you and, of course, last night during the game. How much did you get feedback uh, on, on how you performed throughout the week? Um, you know, I got a lot of positive feedback, um, a lot of good feedback um, to, into regards of helping my draft status and everything like that. And just, um, you know, me going out there and being able to show that I can play all three different positions, you know, with at a high level uh, was one of my main goals going in. And that was one of the main um, things that scouts wanted to see. So going out there and doing that, I really think I did pretty good at it. And, you know, the rest took care of itself. Not everybody could play, but what was it like to have some of your teammates with Treston and Taekwon made had a, a big night, and obviously Kalen was there as well. How much did that kind of make it comfortable for you? Man, you know, it was fun getting to see those guys. Just knowing we went our separate ways after the bowl game to start training for the draft. And um, just being able to get another week with those guys again was pretty fun, um, especially Taekwon and Treston, just because, you know, we're on the offensive side. So, being out there with them and seeing them make plays and practice just reminded me of, you know, us being back in Waco at the grass fields at Hires. So, you know, that was fun, man, just getting the chance to play with those guys again, being in meetings, you know, hanging out again, and that was real fun. I talked to Coach Mateos after I think it might have been either at the end or even during spring drills a year ago. And I was like, after what happened, and again, I don't want to keep rehashing, but 2020 was not good by any means. But I said, what is this a talent issue on the offensive line or is it a just something else? And he said, it's not a talent issue. He goes, but what we have to do is find out and make sure these guys know their clock is ticking. And you're one of those. Did that ring a bell to you in any way? Yeah, man, you know, I think that was um, one of many things, I would say, that um, stuck out to me, just, you know, me and my interactions with Coach Mateos, one-on-one uh, -on -one or in the um, group session, you know, 
that was a thing that constantly went off in my head, you know. But at the same time, I wasn't really thinking about that as much. I was just focused on enjoying that time instead of thinking about, man, it's almost over, it's almost over. And, you know, if you think like that, then you look up and it is over. So I just took it one day at a time, you know, enjoying those meetings, enjoying the little things, like after practice, going up there and watching extra film, laughing with the guys, you know, hanging out with each other, going to eat dinner, going to hang out at Coach Mateo's house. So I feel like that's one way to, you know, go about that. Even though the clock is ticking, you still have to enjoy those little things because you don't want to get overwhelmed with the end goal. Can you ex- can you describe Eric Mateos not only as a football coach, as a person, a man, a friend? A co- I mean, he just the job he did along with Coach Grimes and others as far as the changes. You Sean Bell to quarterback, but can you can you in any way describe Eric Mateos to us? Man, you know, me and Coach Mateos have really grown a great relationship. You know, and. I can describe Cousin Tails as a as a as a true stand up guy. You know, if you take football out of the whole situation, you know, my um, father passed away after the night of the Texas Southern game, and you know, just that whole month and that stretch right there was real hard for me. And he was one he was one of the biggest like comforters, one of the biggest supporters I had during that time. Like that night, you know, he called me and we talked on the phone for about 30 minutes, you know. Just, man, just that that alone just, just showed me what type of man he is, regardless of football. You know, he, yes, he's like, he's the greatest, like, best football coach, best football coach in my eyes. But take football aside, just him as a man, you know, seeing him be a husband, seeing him being a great coach, treating us like his own kids, man. You know, you don't get that a lot with coaches. And just being able to have one like that for my last year was, was real was real good, and I'm forever grateful for that. We're talking to Xavier Newman-Johnson, Baylor offensive lineman, coming back from the Shrine Bowl, getting ready for the rest of the next few weeks as far as up to the NFL draft. What was it like to go from not being able to move anybody as an offensive line to then absolutely just mauling people, and they knew it as well? Man, you know, I just feel like that comes with confidence and that just comes with the group just saying, you know, enough is enough. Like, that's one thing that um, we talked about as a unit this year, Um, you know, because, as you know, the offensive line wasn't the strongest point on the team. We were um, the weakest, if you want to be honest. Um, And just going into this last year, you know, one thing Coach Aranda and the staff harped on was, this team needs to be led by the O-line and the D-line if we expect to win those big games and do great things. And that started, you know, when the workouts with Coach Vic, you know, just grinding it out, sleds and running and fourth quarter drills. And after a while, you know, we had to take it upon ourselves and the leaders like me, Connor, and some of the defensive guys, we told us in the group, we was just like, we're going to lead this team. And we're going to do great things. And if we expect to do great things, it starts with the guys up front. So, you know, and like I said, Aranda, the staff, and the team, they challenged us. And we stepped up to that challenge. And we had a great season like we did. When did you know the wide zone would would click? When did you go, damn, this, this is going to work? Well, you know, um, in the past, we didn't really run too much of that wide zone. So... Um, going into spring ball, you know, we saw flashes. We saw flashes of how it looked. We saw flashes of, you know, when we actually get the technique down, how dangerous the offense could be. And, you know, going into summer, we knew, yeah, we showed flashes, but it, it was nowhere near where we, wanted to, where we wanted it to be, where the staff wanted it to be. And going into fall camp, you know, we just kept progressing, kept grinding, kept getting better at it. And then throughout the season, you you saw, like, how good we got at it. You have now played basically every position, and you did again this week in a lot of ways. How much more valuable does that make you, in, in your opinion? Um, you know, talking to scouts and just different guys, you know, being an interior guy, it's good. And you add a lot of value to yourself by being able to play all three positions. 
So that was one of my main goals was to be able to show that I can play all three positions at a high level and still play at a high level. So that's one thing I went in this week, you know, learning the playbook we got for the Strombo at all three positions, being able to understand it and acknowledge it and teach it at the same time. So that was one of my main goals, and being able to do that um, – Cool. Hey, I know you're getting closer. You got flights to get back from the, the Shrine Bowl. A couple, a connecting flight as well. Because of how often you moved around, especially a, a year or two at Baylor, did you ever, when the snap came, if you weren't playing center or you were or guard, did you ever, even during a play, sometimes not even know what position you were playing? No, man. You know, I, I take that as preparation you know um that's one thing i to say i did was make making sure i knew all three positions so just in case in the heat of the moment it came time that i needed to go in at a different position it wouldn't be you know completely different it wouldn't feel different it would just be switching my stance basically so that's one thing i tried to do when i tried to do i did do during the week was just learning the plays at all three positions and trying to get reps at all three. You were a part of two complete rebuilds at Baylor with Coach Rule and Coach Aran. What was that like to experience that, and did the first one help you with the second one? Yeah, so I feel like the first one helped me, you know, because at that time we were still underclassmen, so I felt like that was the time I was able to sit back and learn from guys like J. Mike and Bravion and Henry Black and Jordan Williams and Clay Johnson and Tech and all those guys and learn how it is to be a leader. So when Randy came in, you know, it was just like, hey, we're going to sh- we're going to be the ones to um, do what he's preaching. Us as leaders are going to be the ones that do what he's preaching. So everybody else can fall in line and see that, hey, this is how things are going to be done. And when Randy said something, we were the guys to back him up. We were the guys to hey, like, this is how things are going to be done now. We have a new head coach, we have a new staff, we have a new everything. And Coach Rue is a great coach, but Aranda was our coach, and we was behind him 100% everything he was preaching. Xavier, last thing, if you're a young man that wants to play offensive line and you see what you guys did a year ago at Baylor, what would you say to somebody that, that is looking at where they should play college football? Man, I would say go to Baylor, man. You know, Coach Mateos, Coach Grimes, Coach Bell, that whole offensive staff is great, man. And not only great coaches, great people off the field. It's rare you're going to find that in college coaches nowadays. It's rare you're going to find college coaches, you know, that will text you out the blue, that will just call and just ask how you're doing, you know. And those three guys right there are, are, are true, true testaments of what a great man is. You All three of those guys have had um, impacts on my life, and I'm forever grateful for that. You enjoying all this, man? Yeah, definitely enjoying it. Thank you, Xavier. Congratulations on the week. I know there's a lot more to go between now and the draft, but congratulations on the week you had at the Shrine Bowl and also everything going forward and the access you gave us. Xavier Newman-Johnson, Baylor guard, offensive lineman, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. From the-